So one issue will be beginning to think about the diagnosis in terms of how do we understand this illness as an illness, not as a, dis a personality disorder, but as something that requires aggressive treatment and something that is time limited in the sense that, um, well, as with many other illnesses, people really do recover. A second piece of this, uh, from my perspective, is understanding which treatments are going to be best for which uh, people and getting a sense for how you will have either biomarkers or other kinds of tests that will help us to approach this just the way we approach many other medical disorders, where we understand how to tailor treatments to get the uh, very best outcomes. And in that sense, I think uh, some of the recent research on the biology of this illness is probably worth mentioning. A paper that was just out last week in the Archives of General Psychiatry demonstrating for the first time um, what looks like a rather profound change in uh, the brain's opiate systems in people with this disorder. This was done with neuroimaging and it shows in now very, I think, compelling way what many of us suspected that um, there is something quite different about the way that this particular system, which has to do with pain and reward and also attachment, works in those who have borderline personality, which also recommends potentially new approaches to therapy as well. And then the third thing I think going forward is that we need to get much better at early detection. There are many, many years that are lost between when somebody first starts to struggle with this and when they finally get a diagnosis and get reasonable treatment. Uh, and that is really unacceptable, just as it would be with cancer or heart disease. We have to figure out how to get much better at detecting this early in its course and intervening aggressively early in the course before so much damage is done to families and to relationships around um, the individual who's struggling with this.